Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor. As a lover of vintage stuff, including toys, a person who collected toys back in the 70s and 80s, and even into the 90s, every year I look at the most sought-after vintage toys and try and get a list together for myself. So I put together this list of the most sought-after vintage collectible action figure toys of 2019. So the first one, number 25 on my list, is a rare Muscle Man figure. If you don't know the line, it came out in the 80s by Mattel. Hundreds of different figures in many different colors, so each character could be in a different color. Many different colors. This is red number 125. There's a catalog that lists every color and variation that there are of these. This single one went for $2,000. Number 24 on the list is a Batman by Mego. This is a double one here because this one's in the rare box. At this point going forward, they put them on rack cards with bubbles on the face of them. This also has the removable cowl, so you could have Bruce Wayne as well. You could even get a send away Bruce Wayne outfit that would fit on this figure. This one went for $2,000, a very good holy grail of these figures. Number 23 here is the Steiner Brothers. This is a UK-England printed version. This is by Galoob. Very scarce. This is one of the most sought-after versions of the WCW toy line by Galoob. Just a real nice example. Carded is what you want. Again, these are from England. $2,225. And don't forget, this list is the most sought-after action figure toys for 2019. These are what you would hope to find. Number 22 is from the Mego line. This is the Pocket Superhero Series. Smaller size figures. This is one of the final versions from this line before it was canceled. This is with the box set of Batman and Robin and the Batmobile. The red boxed version. There are a couple other versions of this same box and set, but this is the one you would hope to run into. This is just a phenomenally rare piece. It's even hard pressed now to find the Pocket Heroes themselves, let alone some of these boxed version. Almost $2,500. Number 21 for those G.I. Joe fans. This is the Cobra Terradrome with Firebat. Now this is a big vehicle with other little attachments and stuff that could come off. This is a really fine example in the box and sealed in the plastic. $2,500. No one's going to open this. This is just going to stay just as you see it. Number 20 is from the GoBots line. This is Tailpipe. This is along the lines of G1 Transformers. Now, this is a Bandai brought in by Tonka. This is on the car, just something you won't see. These GoBots are extremely scarce. Most any on the card will sell for some good money, but this one is the primo top of the line, one of the hottest ones right this moment. Now, number 19 only was available through JCPenney's and possibly Sears. If you weren't a child back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, you might not have had toys ordered through Sears and JCPenney's. And something Sears and JCPenney's could do that other stores couldn't do because of their volume was have special toys just for them. Now, you could only get some action figures through Sears and JCPenney's. Many toy lines had exclusives through there, including Star Wars, Star Trek, and Battlestar Galactica. The only way to get some figures such as these three right here from the Star Trek motion picture from the 1970s was to order them through JCPenney's. And they would show up in a package box, sealed as you see them here, $2,950. Very scarce. Any of these are scarce. Even some of the ones that you would mail away from the proof of purchases if they are still sealed in the package, they are always worth more.
Number 18 is Slam Dunkin' Don. This is in white jersey. This is a variant from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle lines. This is the Playmate series on these. Very scarce figure, especially in the package like this. I would say this is one of the holy grails of the entire line. There's a couple other ones almost up in this price range, but this one is always at the top of the list. Year after year, it increases. 2017, 2018, and now this year as well. They're going up for more money. $2,999. Number 17 on the list is Kenner's Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Arabian Horse. Now, these were pretty scarce on the shelf to begin with. You usually just saw Indy or maybe one of the lesser characters. I never saw the horse as a child. This is a very scarce figure, especially on the card like this. Just a really nice one from Kenner, of course. $3,160. Number 16 is from the Droids TV cartoon series from Star Wars. It's the Boba Fett figure in that series. Slightly different than the normal one. On the card, he's extremely scarce. $3,499. One of the harder to get versions of the Boba Fett figure, especially on a good card. The distribution on this line just wasn't very well done. It only went to bigger toy shops, so many stores in many areas may not have even seen any of these. Number 15 on the list is from Greatest American Hero. It was a TV series. And I remember watching this one as well. Now, George Costanza from Seinfeld had his answering machine message done after the theme song from this show. It was a throwback. I remember this one specifically, too. Now, the figures themselves are very hard to come by, but with the vehicle in the box set like this, it's almost impossible. Now, these never were around when I was, you know, younger. I never saw anything like this. I don't even think I saw one of these till 10 years ago online, so they were very scarce. $3,500 on this set here. Number 14 on my list is the nurse figure from the 1960s large size G.I. Joe figures. One of the hardest ones to get. This was geared towards girls, but the whole line was all a boy series. So there wasn't many people rushing out to get this doll. So it's extremely scarce. This one has the box, just a fine example. She still even has the wrap around her hair with all of the accessories. Just a superb example of this doll. $3,500. Number 13 on the list is the Pally Toys, which is the English UK version of Zorro in the box. Very, very scarce. It's a version, a variety of the US doll that would have been made over here by Mego. Just a fine example. With the box, it's extremely scarce. Even loose, it's hard to come by. $3,600. Something that any Zorro collector would love to add to their collection. Number 12 on the list is from the Super Queens line, which was by Ideal. The face on this doll literally looks like the Tammy doll, if you are aware of that line. Just a totally unique version of this. This is a sealed copy, a sealed version of this doll. Any of these four are extremely scarce. I've never even seen a Mira doll. All the other ones I have seen, or there have been some on eBay, $3,851. This is before Mego. This is just a really early version of any of this sort of female-oriented action figures for the comic books. Number 11 is the Skeletor figure from the Masters of the Universe. This is the first run of these. Very scarce on the card still. Every collector has a Skeletor in their collection. This would be one you would want still on the card in excellent primo condition. Now this is an 8-back, meaning there are only 8 figures pictured on the back of the card. 
Same with Star Wars. When it says 12 back, that means there are only 12 action figures shown on the back. 21, same thing. 21 figures shown on the back. That's what that figure and terminology means. An excellent primo example. Dom, primetime treasure hunter, would love this one, I am sure. I wonder if he would sell it if he had it. It would be hard-pressed when you come across something this scarce, whether you'd want to sell it or hang on to it, as someone like me who does enjoy collecting certain things. Number 10 on the list is the Lizard from the Marvel series. This is a Spider-Man villain if you followed the comic books as I did. This is Amigo on the card. Now, some are scarcer in the box and some are scarcer on the card with the bubble. This is just a rare figure here. Now, this was hard to come by again back in the day in general. I remember having most of the characters, but this was one I never did get. $4,000. Number nine on the list is the Vix figure from the Droid series, the Star Wars animated series again. Very scarce. This is the Brazilian version of this. The Holy Grail. He's different than the standard version. I think the coloring scheme for one is different also. A very scarce figure of any type, but this version is just extremely hard to come by. $4,850. Again, one of those Grail pieces that every Star Wars action figure collector will definitely want in their collection. Number eight on the list is a Generation 1 G1 Transformers. This is a Canadian-only version. This is the Pepsi-Cola Optimus Prime boxed version. The U.S. version is the standard Optimus Prime. This one was the Pepsi one for promotional tie-in, if I'm not mistaken. There's a couple other ones of these in different patterns and styles also. But any of these go for some insane amounts of money. $5,000 for this boxed version of an original with the box. Now, had the box been in better condition you can see some wear to the top corners and edges it would probably went for a few thousand dollars more Number seven on the list is from the Mask series, another one of the TV shows that was short-lived. It has a cult following. Um, I never watched this one. This was a little late for me, but I do remember seeing the toys out there. Now, this is Switchblade with his airplane, jet, helicopter, whatever you'd want to call it, in the box, sealed still. Again, sealed, you can't beat. No one's going to open this if it is truly sealed. $5,388, just a massively incredible, nice version of this toy. Number six on the list is another scarce Generation 1 G1 Transformers. This is Metroplex, another one of the early toys that took several pieces together to make a big base and figures and the whole works. $5,500 with the box. Just a real nice example of this. This one's even graded with an acrylic case. Number five on the list, another one for Dom, the primetime treasure hunter. This is the Eternia playset, complete in the box. Not only is it complete in the box, but they're still on the sprues. I have never seen anything like this before. Just a superb preem example. The box is pretty decent. Almost $6,000 for this one. This would be the hottest version of almost any of the He-Man, Master of the Universe toys you could get. Any of these will sell for some good money, but like this, it's just unheard of. Now, number four on the list is the USS Flag from the three and three quarter inch G.I. Joe series from the 80s. This has got to be the biggest toy I have ever seen in my entire life. This is a massive toy. Even parts from this toy can sell for hundreds of dollars. And this toy has a lot of parts. It is just massive. You can see the kids playing with this, how they are dwarfed by this toy. $7,000 this one went for. I have seen it go for more than this even. Any of these completes a few thousand dollars. It's just a massive piece. Similar in scarcity is to the space shuttle from the G.I. Joe line as well. This is just an awesome piece. 7000 as I said.
Now, the last three on this list all happen to be Star Wars related. Star Wars has dominated the collectible field for these style of toys for quite some time. Now, coming in at number three is the vinyl version of the Jawa figure. Now, originally this was thought to be a made up piece until some started showing up on the card still. So this is a genuine original piece with the vinyl cape, $8,200. Very few of these made it out. They changed almost immediately from what I can see. Again, this one's a graded version, $8,200. Number two on the list has a double thing going on for this one here. Now, at the time, Kenner only had a heads-up shot on this in black and white, if I remember right. So their call was that it was blue and that he was a normal-sized action figure. The actual character in the movie is small and red, so this is totally wrong for what this character is. So had it just been the character Snaggletooth, he would have went for some good money either way. But this one has the leg on wrong. He actually has two right legs, and this is one of those factors that wasn't caught on this because it's a boxed set. It came in a boxed version of the Cantina set through Sears. Now, Kenner was always good with catching stuff like this, but this was in a boxed version. So it was sealed in a baggie and then placed in a box. So you couldn't see the figure when it was being finally checked. So this is how something like this would get out. There's like two or three known examples of this exact thing happening. $9,450 on this one. And the number one vintage action figure that is sought after in 2019 is not even an official figure. This is a bootleg copy from Turkey, but it was well produced with vehicles even. It is a knockoff totally and completely of the originals, carded with a bubble just like the originals would have. But this says Stars War on the actual facing of it. This is one of those oddities that's just so bizarre. Some of the backgrounds are even oddball things such as a remote control to a TV and things along that line. Everybody wants one of these. I've even seen a knockoff of this, a bootleg of a bootleg. Now, the only time I've ever run across these is in someone's collection, a high-end collection, or at a show. They just don't show up very often. This one went for $9,500. The names are all wrong. Everything about this is phony in every way, but a true diehard Star Wars collector is going to want this because this is from the 80s. This is from the original runs of these toys. Now, again, these are the most sought-after vintage toys, not what you're going to find every day, but what you hope to find. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.